It's kind of racial a little bit, you know? You have to, you, you we'll get into it with the Hispanics at times, you know? And that was like our thing, you know? You had a little, whatever little hood or clique come up to the school, and the blacks come together, it's cracking. We turned up, we squabbling, all that, so. So was the racial tension also at Compton High School as well as Dominguez? Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of, yeah, hell yeah. It was a few times, it was a few rides up there. <laughs> niggas be in class, like, hey man, hey, you hey, you gonna, you gonna be here after school? Cause niggas talking about something, they gonna be sliding through the school and all this and that. And you better be on your shit. I'm like, all right, for sure. You know, so, but yeah, it was a little, it was tension with the race wars back then, you know? And where do you think the the source of this tension was at? Because the Mexicans will blame the blacks. They're always this, that, and the other. The blacks will say, hey, we cool with them until they start tripping. Did you ever kind of step back and look at it and, and try to figure out where did this tension come from in the first place? A lot of this stuff is, is told lies. You know what I'm saying? Like... And I don't know how people are going to receive it on how I deliver it. But I mean, you know, the facts are the facts. You know, black people being in America, being here, we didn't we didn't have a choice. You know, a lot of our ancestors were brought over here. You know what I'm saying? Like no shade to know anyone, but other ethnicities and races and nationalities, they come over here. You get what I'm saying? Because they see the opportunity to where you have melanated people that are over here that were forcefully brought over here. So whatever, whatever a parent or a guardian is teaching the child in home, they're going to project that out. You're going to project certain things out. Like I, I can remember a time where, you know, I had Hispanic friends and I wasn't allowed to go to their house because I was black because I was melanated. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, damn, you know. I can't go to his house, but my, my, my black friend, I can go to his house all the time. So it was like, damn, so why, like, what's the, what's, what was being said in that home? You get what I'm saying? And then you look at the historical facts of melanated people being in America, like, we were forcefully brought over here, and a lot of other people were able to just either sneak over here because they wanted to come over here because of the resources, and they seen opportunity. It's, it, the spectrum is different. It's a difference coming over here because you see opportunity and you don't like your government versus being took from your homeland and forcefully being brought over here and then force fed a doctrine and then understanding that didn't come from your own people. It came from the people who enslaved you. So whatever those two, our worlds are different and a lot. The only similarities that we have with, to me, after stepping back and looking at a situation, we live in the same communities. We ended up in the same community. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to come, like, you're not going to cross over the border, right, and go straight to Beverly Hills <laughs> unless you the, unless you the plug. <laughs> but if you coming from a place to where you see that your government is treating you bad and you want to come have better, you're going to come to a place and you're going to start at the bottom, which is the ghetto. You're not going to go straight to Beverly Hills, Seal Beach, Laguna Beach. You're not going straight there. You're going to come to the ghettos because that's what you can afford until you work your way out of that. Versus the people coming over here and being forced into situation, bad laboring and things of that nature. And then we're screaming for, hey, you're telling us this is what we're worth, but we know we're worth more. Can we get can we get like an understanding on betterness? Because y'all don't treat us no better. Y'all unfortunately brought us over here and told us we this and that. And then you have people that share the same likeness and understanding with that. So I believe to a degree some of that stuff can be racial, racially motivated. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're not out here saying don't treat treat them wrong and treat us right. We're just saying, like, hey, can we get a fair exchange? No robbery? Y'all already robbed us. <laughs> you know, can we get something in exchange for that? And then those mindsets are now molded to saying, like, well, these people think they better than y'all. These people say that they're better than y'all. Did you hear that come out, come out of our mouth? No. Do you think it's better now or worse or the same? Have, has anything changed? As far as racial tension? Yeah. Um, you have it still. I don't think it's super, super being um, promoted and seen, but you have it. It's, it's, you have it still. 
You know what I'm saying? You do. You, but you have people who, you know, you have who people who move into our communities and they adapt to our culture. You know, they adapt to the music, they adapt to the, lang the lingo, they adapt to the lifestyle. And, you know, it's kind of like, it's merging now. So it's not really super seen in that light. Do you still have the hoods, the the black hoods who beef with the Mexican hoods? You know what I'm saying? You still have that. But I don't believe it's being highly promoted and seen like that nowadays. But you still have it. Yeah, the very first time I saw attention, hood tension, was I was looking at the uh, graffiti in Compton one day, and I saw that Palmer block crossed out Tortilla Flats. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. That, that, this was in the 90s, right? you know, when all of this started to percolate. And now there's so many different hoods that are going at it. Um, you said something about the Latinos... Um, at the school, because it was a predominantly black community first, mm -hmm. Mexicans move in, they kind of pick up on the, on the culture, they listen to the rap music. Yeah. I also notice a lot of Mexicans that grew up in black neighborhoods, they say the N-word, and I'm sure all the Mexicans in Compton is N this, N that. What's your view on that? Because when they go to the penitentiary, they don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, and, and and I say that with respect. Yeah, you know, we get immune to stuff, right? Because we're in the quote, unquote, we're in our freedom. So a person can use a derogatory word that was meant for you and me because of the color of our skin and use it freely, right? Oh, I don't mean nothing. But when you get into that in, in that system, the politics change. Why? Because they know the difference. They know the difference between saying words and using what that word means. They know the severeness of it. That's why the politics in the prison system is some, them is some real politics. So you got dudes who get comfortable. They get complacent. Oh, man, he grew up in the hood. It don't matter. Uh, they don't look. They're not looking that far ahead. You get what I'm saying? And then you got dudes who they like, well, shit, I ain't never going to go to jail. So I, don't, I ain't got a trip. You got anxiety like, man, I'll tell before I sit in the cell, so I ain't going to have to go through them politics. You never know where somebody mind that, but people get real comfortable. And like I said, man, you know, I know a few Hispanics who don't use it. You know, the, it, when you look up origin words, like what does that word mean? You'll find out that from, a, from an Egyptian status and from a biblical status, the word means black. It, mean, it meant a different word, but then these words be artic are be alternated and changed and given to us and we using them as nigger, nigga, like black had nigger and then we change it to nigga and now we using it for a swag word. You get what I'm saying? Versus the origin of the word, which was meant to be a derogatory term towards us. It's like, damn man, they these these niggas know how to change and, and use it's like you, you give it you give us give us bullshit and we know how to come and Create from the stuff that you give us. But it's like, even with that, it's like, should you still use it? You know it comes from a bad term. You know, as a, as a people, your culture don't even associate with that word. So why use it in the first place? Because if you go, if you ever get locked up, you know they're going to politic on you. It ain't going to be the same. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, <laughs> to each his own on that one, man. You yeah. Know? To each his own on it. But you've heard it probably hundreds of times, Mexicans talking... With I've English. heard a few. I've heard a few. Yeah. No, being from the community, we have a few Hispanics from the you know community. So you hear it a few times. But but then sometimes I feel like sometimes a person to be cautious on saying it because they like, am I am asking? You know, like we know the difference. Like, come on, it's like we know the difference between us. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when I'm put like this: when black people accept it, it's all good. You get what I'm saying? When he's like, oh, man, I ain't tripping. And then everybody get comfortable until it's used against you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Once it get used against you, it's like, don't say that to me. You know, so. Now, I've seen a, a, a few mixed couples that are from Compton. Usually it's a brother with a Mexican girl. I haven't seen too many Mexican dudes with a black girl, but have you seen some of the, some, sometimes uh, there's a little bit of interracial going on in Compton? Yeah, have it's you, everywhere, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen 
black women with Mexican dudes, though? I've seen one. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I've experienced it. Which one is more common that you that you've seen? Um, melanated men with the Hispanic women, with Mexican women. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the frequent. <laughs> <laughs> that's frequently seen in the city. That's yeah. frequently seen um, throughout the world now. And you know, I say this. I love to see us. I love to see us with us. I love seeing. Melanated love. I love melanated women. You know, I think it's a. I think it's a sadness when you when you hear people say that. What I'm saying, and they get put in a bad light because what's wrong with seeing melanated love? You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with seeing two melanated men, a man and a woman coming together and having a melanated baby, a baby? You know what I'm saying? So like, I see it. Who say none that? Because that's all about black families. Anyone that's that's uh, promoting black families should be celebrated. 